Today I'm going to be giving you a summary and my review of this gem of a book, The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. It's a book that is so powerful that merely talking about it is going to inspire you today. That's coming up. What's going on everybody? I am Youngman Brown and this is your creative push the podcast and the YouTube channel that's all about pushing you to pursue your creative passions. And something that pushed me to pursue my creative passions and actually something that pushed me to start this podcast in the first place is The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. This is a book that I believe every creative person should own a copy of. Uh, so a little bit of a spoiler as to what my review and my score is gonna be at the end of this video. But I wanna give you a brief summary about um, exactly what this book talks about and why it is integral to every creative person to at least read, but to definitely have a copy of as well. So let's not waste a moment of your time. Let's get right into the summary of the book. Stephen Pressfield has three major themes of this book. One, resistance is a real force that artists must battle. Two, inspiration is divine and the artist muse is real. And three, to achieve divine inspiration, we must turn pro, we must become professionals. And the War of Art itself is divided into three books. The first book is called Defining Resistance. And if you have listened to this podcast even just once, you have probably heard me talk about resistance. And I use the word resistance because I believe it's the perfect word to describe what artists and creative people go through, uh, universally go through. And Pressfield likens it to writing, and he says that it's not the writing that's the hard part, it's the sitting down to write that's the hard part. And the thing that makes it hard is resistance. Resistance is the most toxic force on the planet, and it's what keeps all of us from living the unlived lives inside of us. And it comes to destroy you, not just in art, but in any act that rejects immediate gratification in favor of long-term growth, anything that brings us to our higher self. So exercising, dieting, starting a business, anything that we know we're supposed to do, anything that brings us to our higher self, all fits into the category of something that resistance can stop us from doing. Resistance is internal, invisible, insidious, and essentially Pressfield likens it to the devil, the internal devil that will tell you anything to stop you from putting in the work. And resistance is universal, Everyone experiences it, and it stays with all of us for our entire lives. Resistance is fueled by our own fear, and the more important something is to us, the more resistance we encounter as we start or as we actually start to achieve our goals. And actually, resistance becomes the worst as we're on the finish line, right as we're about to finish this important thing. Some symptoms of resistance are procrastination, you know, lying to ourselves habitually that we'll do it tomorrow, so we're always living in that limbo. Sex, drugs, alcohol, shopping, eating, getting into trouble, drama, self-medication, constantly distracting ourselves, self-doubt, being in isolation, criticizing ourselves or others, needing to heal ourselves first before we get to our creative passion, rationalization, and the biggest symptom of all, fear. And what makes it so much harder to push past resistance is the fact that we live in a society that's so good at exploiting and accommodating resistance and the feelings that it causes within us. Now book two is called Turning Pro, and Stephen Pressfield actually has a book of the same title that goes much deeper into this topic. But basically in this book, Pressfield is defining the professional and comparing the professional to the amateur. The professional is somebody that goes at it seven days a week and the amateur is somebody that's kind of a weekend warrior and doing their creative passion as a side hobby. Now Pressfield says that the major difference between the amateur and the professional is that the professional is able to separate what's urgent from what's important and he or she does what's important first. And the important thing is the work. He says that when you become a professional, you get comfortable with being miserable, with going to war and with going through hell. And when we're amateurs, we take our art too seriously. 
We're over invested in its success and we're terrified of its failure. Pressfield goes on to define the professional. The professional is patient. The professional knows that it's the tortoise versus the hare, a long haul marathon. The professional seeks order and ignores the fact that there's a mystical aspect of creativity and instead focuses on technique and fundamentals. The professional knows that fear will never go away and doesn't use good excuses because if he gets a good excuse today, it will be even easier to use one tomorrow. The professional knows that the world is unfair but doesn't use that as an excuse. He or she simply takes it into account. The professional doesn't show off, isn't afraid to ask for help, endures adversity, and doesn't take success or failure too seriously. The professional blows critics off, recognizes their own limitations, reinvents themselves, and treats him or herself like a corporation. And Pressfield says that all of this happens when we make the decision to turn pro. Simple as that. I'll let you know what I think about that in a moment. But first, book three, which I actually really, really, really love. <laughs> and it's called Beyond Resistance, The Higher Realm. Now in this book, Pressfield tells us that our purpose as human beings is to fight resistance and to create art every single day. Not just to be able to create art, but in order to figure out what we're doing on this planet, what our purpose is. And this is powerful and incredibly true advice and the thing that is just the thesis of your creative push. I could eat this advice with a spoon <laughs> because it is the most key and fundamental, I think, uh, role for human beings is to use your art to figure out what you're doing on this planet. And Pressfield has this powerful chapter called Testament to a Visionary, where he gives this quote from William Blake, who says, eternity is in love with the creations of time. And this was such a powerful chapter that I'm gonna make another video about just uh, what Pressfield is talking about here. And this is where things get a little bit woo woo, but basically Pressfield is saying that uh, we exist on a plane where time exists. Uh, but there's a plane above us where it's eternal. And that is where our inspiration comes from. It's a sort of spiritual plane or a collective unconscious where our inspiration is, is given to us and it's given to different people and it's up to us to act as vessels or satellites to bring that into the world. And from that realm come muses and angels to help us on our journey. So when you sit down and get to work, the muse sees you doing that and it smiles approvingly upon you and it comes to your aid to help you in the creation process. It sees that you're fighting resistance, that you are acting as a, a ready vessel for it. So it comes to your help, to your aid, and makes your fight against resistance that much easier. Pressfield tells us that before he gets to work, he says a prayer to the muse, and he tells us that we should too. Because once we make a true commitment to start something, forces of the universe, which he calls angels among us, come to help us. But then also when we're out for a walk or doing the dishes, we're organizing and editing in the back of our minds. And this process again goes with the idea that it comes from somewhere else, that we're just dictating. And even when we're asleep, we're getting help. Pressfield says that our dreams are messages that we have to hear. So pay attention to your dreams because they might help you in your creation process when you're getting to work. Pressfield then goes on to define and compare the ego and the self. The ego is concerned with everyday life and survival. The self wants to create and evolve, and the ego is where resistance lives. The ego believes that we live, we die, time is linear, everyone is separate, and self-preservation is imperative. The self believes that death, time, and space are all illusions, we are all one, and love is the supreme emotion. When we get drunk, high, or meditate, we're trying to destroy the ego and get to the self. The ego likes the way things are, thank you very much. It doesn't want us to evolve. So it hits us with resistance, it hits us with fear, the fear of anything it can throw at us, but especially the fear of success. Pressfield then goes on to talk about the authentic self. 
And he says that we're not a blank slate, that we all have a destiny to fulfill in our jobs as human beings, as I said before, is to find that destiny and to fulfill it. And wrapping up here, he talks about hierarchies and how they are an artist's downfall. Hierarchies served a purpose when humans were in small tribes, but now that there's so many people in the world and you have such access to all of those people with social media, they cause artists and really anybody to look up and down instead of within. And the question that Pressfield wants you to ask yourself is, if you were the last person on earth, would you still create your art? Is it that important to you and to your soul? Because you should be creating it for you and your soul and not for your audience and not for anyone else. And he concludes by saying that if you don't create the art that you're supposed to create, and if you don't live the life that you're supposed to live, if you don't fulfill your destiny, you're not just cheating yourself, but you're cheating the rest of the world who desperately needs your message and who desperately needs you to live your destiny. So the first time I read this book was about six or seven years ago, and it completely changed my life. It made me realize that other people go through what, what I'm going through. Other people experience procrastination, laziness, and especially fear, fear of creating, fear of creating especially something new. Um, I didn't realize why I was dragging my feet for years to even create my first uh, music video that I made. And this book kicked me into high gear. It took me from zero miles an hour to 100 miles an hour. And I was able to actually, in a couple days, create what took me two, two and a half years to uh, just kind of think about all the time and just be way too scared to actually create. So Stephen Pressfield is able to so eloquently um, encapsulate what artists go through, what creative people feel uh, but can't quite express. He gives a name to it, he calls it resistance, and it's the most accurate uh, term that I have found in over 350 plus episodes exploring this very topic and trying to help other people to uh, gain exposure to the feelings of fear, procrastination, self-doubt, uh, all of the things that uh, try to hold us back. And it's all internal, and Pressfield is able to kind of give you that diet of uh, knowledge and inspiration to help you get through it. So even if you've watched this video and I've given you the summary of it, it's still a great book to get because he is able to consolidate all of the information into not just great writing that really is able to convey the message, but just bite-sized chunks. You could read this book in one sitting, you could read it in uh, one or two hours, and you can also pick it up as I have uh, anytime you're feeling that uh, those pangs of self-doubt. If you don't want to listen to your creative push, this is a book that you must have uh, to pick up for those bite-sized inspirations. There is, however, one major point of this book that I disagree with, and it's actually most of the stuff that he talks about in book two. And let me rephrase that because I definitely agreed with this when I first read it, and uh, seeing myself as a professional and taking on that mindset when I was first starting out, like I said, at zero miles an hour to take me to that initial escape velocity was important. It was important to see myself as a professional instead of the weekend warrior, um, to get my feet off the ground and to get moving, to, to get action, to get momentum, to start creating art, to gain that confidence, to just get going. But I think there comes a point in time where it's okay to have this thing, whatever the thing is that you do, just be a thing that you do. It's okay to be a weekend warrior. It's okay to do this thing for the sole reason of um, exploring your consciousness, exploring what your purpose is on this earth, and to give you that joy of being somebody that creates instead of somebody that is constantly consuming. So there's so much value that amateurs can get from just creating art, just expressing yourself, just taking time away from your busy life to uh, explore your consciousness. So while the idea of turning pro was something that helped me so much when I was just starting out, it's something that I've come to disagree with, especially talking to so many of you 
and talking to so many of my guests and my own personal experience of uh, being able to create uh, whenever I find time and not having that pressure of, you know, it needing to be my professional thing that I, you know, do this instead of doing my job and I make money from it. No, it, um, creating art and writing has brought me so much joy just for the act of doing it. And I think that for a lot of you, that is enough. So the all or nothing mentality might not be for all of you. It might be for some of you and it might help you out, especially if you're just starting out. But that's my one uh, kind of caveat about this book, something that I've come to uh, really disagree with. So that being said, it is still one of my favorite books and is a life-changing book and it gets a 9.5 from me. If you had asked me six years ago, I would have got a 10, but because of the fact that I disagree with some of the things he says and just the uh, kind of harshness of it, I'm gonna give it a 9.5. If you've read The War of Art, I would love to hear your take on the book and whether or not it changed your life like it changed mine. And if you have a book that you'd like me to check out, maybe a book that influenced you and helped you on your art career that you think could help the rest of your Creative Push community, please let me know and I'll check it out. I have a couple more books that have really impacted me as a creative person that I'll be uh, reviewing and summarizing for you in the future. Uh, so if you like this kind of content, make sure that you subscribe. But that's all I've got for you today. Hopefully you were inspired. Go pick up this book because once you run out of your Creative Push episodes to listen to or YouTube videos to watch, you're gonna need some more inspiration and this little guy will never let you down. I love you all and remember that the universe needs your creations and you are the universe. We'll see you next time. <laughs>